Hey guys, Jeremy here. Today we're going to be doing a Viking character design in Illustrator CC. So I got a comment the other day um, and someone needed to learn how to do a Viking character. So I thought it would be really cool to do a tutorial. So what I've done is just got a, did a sketch. I got some inspiration on Pinterest and Google um, and really just looked at types of Vikings and the design and you know what they wear and that type of thing and just did a quick little sketch. Uh, nothing major. Um, you know, I'm not the best drawer, but you learn as you go and you just draw everything as shapes. It's pretty simple. So I've got my sketch here, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this into a template layer so we can um, work over it. So I'm just going to go to my layers panel on the right here. I'm just going to double click that. I'm going to rename the layer sketch. And then we're going to go to the template box, click that, and dim the image to whatever you like. I usually leave it around 40% or 50%, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now and then press OK. So now you can see the layer is locked and it's a template layer so we can work on top of it. We're just going to create a new layer by going to the new document button on the little bottom here. So click that. So now I've got a new layer. I'm just going to rename this. Um, we're going to call it helmet because we're going to do the helmet first. Always work your objects in groups or, you know, do bit by bit so it's easier and you don't get lost with all your shapes and stuff like that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my pen tool by pressing P and I'm going to select a light bright color. Usually I work with a magenta, which is pretty easy. Now I'm just going to start building the assets or well, each part of the design. We'll start with the helmet. So I'm just using the pen tool, clicking and dragging. It's really simple. Just clicking and dragging, trying to get some nice curves. Just like that. I'm going to use the direct select tool and just select that and um, pull this little circle as you can see and, and actually smooths out the lines. This works if you have CC. And the horns are kind of pointy so I might um, drag, just select that with the direct selection tool and drag that in to make it a bit you know, lighter, not as sharp. And then I'm going to start building the bottom bit. If you click and drag and you hold shift, you see the um, keys the proportions. Makes the, the curve more smoother as well. And if you hold shift as well and you click the pen tool, it's going to make a straight line. As you can see, this is not straight though, so I'm just going to fix that up. It doesn't always have to be perfect, just do your best. I'm just going to do a square here, just like this. And then what I do to get rid of things, I use the Shape Builder tool. So I'll select all the objects, press Shift M. And then if you hold all the options, you just go minus, or actually you're going to plus that. So I've got the square there, and this. Select these two, Shift M, select that. So it gets rid of the shapes that I don't want. Or you can use the Pathfinder and get rid of it that way. I'm going to select the shape, hold, um, press 0 for the reflect tool, and then I'm going to go in the center of this point and hold shift, or, I mean hold um, option or alt, and you'll get this reflect box, so this is really handy. Um, I'm just going to go to vertical, and then you press copy, and it pretty much just copies the object and flips it. Then I'm just going to go ahead, select these two, and get rid of that shape. So we have this shape here. So pretty much we've got our helmet almost done. Hopefully this isn't too boring for you guys. Clicking and dragging those there. So sweet. So now we've got our helmet. And I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to lock that helmet layer and then we're going to go um, head. So I'm slowly, slowly building up all of these shapes. Really simply, just with the, all of the pen tool. If you click on the anchor points, it gets rid of the the handle. See, it's got the handle there. If you just click, boom, it just gets rid of it. And then you can just redo that. That's what you do when you don't want it to automatically curve by itself. And you want to select it which way you want to go. You can also edit a handle by holding Alt. And you'll get this little triangle on your mouse. And you can just click and drag the left button. 
and then I can edit that if I didn't like the shape like that you can see how the shapes overlapping I can do the shape builder tool and um, clean it up a bit but usually it's okay because it's gonna be behind the helmet I can just leave the shape like that and I can fix it up later so I'm gonna start building shapes like this with like normal see how his nose is like a circle instead of using the pen tool I'm just gonna get a circle and then just go like that it's a lot easier and with this I'm gonna go to the arc tool for this one and just hold shift and then drag that and now I've got an arc and then hold shift and rotate it so these are gonna be his eyes but actually I'm gonna hold alt if you press um, control Y it brings up the outline mode see now it's all the outlines so it's all the lines and the paths that we've created and then we can try and find the center I'm just gonna find the center of the nose and hold alt like we did before and I'm just reflecting this so I just reflected the eye so it's roughly like center for now I'm gonna select these strokes and I'm gonna go to shift W for the width tool and I'm just gonna make this click and drag to make this a bit wider like this and I'm gonna click the ends and then close this off so it tapers it off just like that so now we've got like an eye Probably uneven, but it's okay for now. Sweet, sweet. So the assets are starting to get built. Now I'm just gonna build the beard. This video is probably gonna be long, so if you guys don't like these type of videos, just let me know. Because this is all for you guys. So I'm just doing like some little hair slash beard. I reckon it'll be pretty cool to have a beard though. Back in those days, probably feel like a boss. <laughs> so I'm just dragging this out slowly, slowly, dragging the curves. You know, you can take your time with this. It might not always be perfect the first time, but if you keep practicing, you'll eventually be quicker and faster with the pen tool, as well as with the sketches. Do that, and then I can um, I'll fix this up. Just like that. Sweet, so now we've got a beard, and I'm gonna create just hold alt and shift so I pressed M for the marquee tool which just gets the circle so I'm just instead of holding alt and shift and doing this I'm just holding alt and it's an, and then I'm just dragging up and down to create like an oval shape for the mouth so I've done that and then I'll just copy um, and paste so control C then control F and then this is for the, the tongue area So chuck that in there. Like this, and then I'm select those and then minus that out. So now we've got like the tongue bit. <coughs> Sweet, so I think that's all the head now. So create a new layer. I'm gonna do the shield now in the back. Actually, I'll just do body for his main body bit. So see, I've got all my layers, so it's easy to you know, select them, get rid of them, whatever. He's got a shield on his back, so I'm just going to do a circle. And that's going to be in the back. Um, let's not lock that for now. So I'm going to start building his body. He's pretty fat, this guy. I was going to do a skinny version, but I realized Vikings probably eat, like a lot of meat. And drink beer and all that stuff. Reminds me of like The Witcher or something. Or like Skyrim. Pretty cool. Sweet. So got his body. And then with the arms, because he's got the same arms with the same axes, I'm probably just going to copy and paste. You know, it just saves time. You don't always have to constantly recreate things if it's 
the same shape or the same area. Sometimes you don't get the points that you want. If it's not pointy enough, you want to make sure you're clicking and then redragging it out to make it pointy. This is for his like shirt or his fur, whatever, for the arm. Oh, actually, I forgot a bit there. If you if your path doesn't go, if it goes off the path, you can just re-click on it and then it will continue where it last left off. So that's a good point to note as well. So yeah, that's good enough for now. Then it's building his arm up. Sometimes I just do straight arms or long weed arms. But this time I just did, you know, you can see there's a bit of forearm difference. It's a bit chunky. So a bit like that. So we can fix up all that later. So you don't have to copy your sketch perfectly, but use it as a reference. See, I've stuffed up a few bits, but I can always fix it up later. I'm just doing the main areas that I need to do. Just doing his little fingers. Axe will be behind the things, but it looks for now. It's just gonna go it like that. Now I'm gonna build this axe. This is how the axes look like, apparently. So make sure whenever you're doing like character design or something like that, you know, make sure you're referencing things. You can break the rules though. You know, you can just use your imagination, be creative with it. Best thing is just to do it, and you learn as you go. Nothing always has to be perfect. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So then I'll just copy the uh, I'll just hold shift and then select all these elements. And then press O for the reflect tool. And then once again just gonna select the nose. It's probably not gonna be on his body properly. And then I'm just gonna vertical and then press copy. So now I've copied it. Um, I think his arm. Okay, I gotta fix his arm. My illustration wasn't correctly straight. Sometimes it's good to put guides. I did put guides as you can see, but it wasn't gonna work out because the sketch was off. So, you know, just, everything's not symmetrical in real life, so that's fine for now. So, okay, goes axes. Now we're gonna do this little pendant. So we've got circles, control paste, hold shift and alt like that. You can see how the stroke is different. If you don't have um, stroke, uh, sc scale strokes and effects, you can see if you go to transform panel, if you click the little show options button, you can see scale or strokes and effects. That's why you can see as I've dragged this out, the stroke is increased, which is, um, Pretty handy sometimes. And then I'm just gonna do a circle, another one for the pendant, and then I'll just direct select that and delete that. I don't know why the okay there, it's all one line. Now I'm just gonna do the skull. Actually, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna 
I'll do a circle because it's a bit wonky, which is what I want. And I can do circles for these on the ovals. For the eyes. Smith like this. Oops. So we've got the skull there. Then we got the belt. And then we're gonna build the rest of his uh, skirt. Sorry if I'm not saying anything, guys. Probably fell asleep right now. <laughs> Just trying to quickly build this. So now I've got the skirt. And then, alright, we'll make a new layer as well. And we'll do the legs on a different layer. So it's cookie, the legs. His uh, legs are pretty blocky. So I can just do a square like that. It doesn't have to be exactly, but it's really simple. Then do the shoes. And be really rough. Then and do a circle. Direct select that bottom, press delete. And then press Control J, and that joins um, whatever path you've selected. If it's not, if it's um, an open path, then you just press Control J, and that joins the lines. As you can see, it's like an um, ellipse now. So I'll drag it there, and then I'm just gonna fix this up just like that. And then I'm just gonna Alt copy that over. Maybe I should put his leg a bit more on an angle. And you can see because I've got the shape, I use Shape Builder. It did that to the shape because it creates a new shape. So sometimes you don't have to use it. Use the Pathfinder and then Minus front, create a copy. Um, so I'm just gonna put that leg a bit on an angle, just like that. And then redo that shape. Sweet, so quick, sweet, we've built all our Viking. As you can see, it's on the layers, so I can just close and hide all the layers. So that's what we did from the sketch, just using the pen tool and the shapes. And then that's it, we built, did that. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna color it. So, uh, what I do from here is slowly go, well, I'm going to go to color palette. So I'm going to go to low colors. So I'm click a new tab and then I'm going to go to low colors. Check this side out. Really cool. And I'm just going to drag, uh, pick some color, a palette, color palette that I like. Um, one of my friends uh, made this. His name is Mackenzie. He's really cool. Um, what we're gonna do? Yeah, I think we'll just pick. Actually, yeah, we'll go with this one. So I'm just gonna double click these, select that. Come in here, go to the color palette, double click on the color icon, control paste that in, and then we're gonna create a new swatch. Click that. So it's just creating the new swatch that we created. And a handy tr a handy trick is to get rid of all these other ones we don't need. We just go to options and go select all unused. 
and then just delete boom like that so now that all the colors that you're not being currently used in your artwork it's just going to delete it so it's really handy and get rid of the mess keep it clean and then this one double click the color palette foreground and yep. create a new swatch press enter or ok so I'm really just showing you the whole process usually usually what I do sometimes it's different depending on the project I'm working on everyone's process is different so it's best to always just practice and find out what works what works best for you and always take your time you know So now I've got my color palette, and then what I'll do, I'll just create a new layer, call it color, make some circles, and then I'll just get rid of a stroke, and then I'll just color these up. I'm missing a color. Yeah, some color got deleted. I'll just quickly get that back up. I don't know what's happening here, it keeps stuffing up. Okay, there we go. So now we got a color palette. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go um, throughout and color it now. And I'll quickly do that and then I'll check with you what the final result is. Hey guys, so I've finished coloring in the character and this is what he looks like. So for now, what we've done, we've used this color palette and I've added a few extra colors as you can see in the swatch palette here. And I've, I've added a few more grays and a gold and that type of thing. So I'm going to open it on the layers now and I'll show you all the shapes. So pretty much all these are the shapes and I've just filled them in with the color that I wanted. So we've got his skin, you know, his clothes, his beard, all the separate shapes that we've made to build the character. And then we've got the axes the legs, the boots, all that type of thing. So um, pretty much it's just a flat design this is. There's no, there's no shading or anything, but I'll show you in a second um, what I've done with the character. So all this is, is just filling in the colors um, with the shapes. And then they're all on there, each layer, because we built each layer separately. So if I close the layers one by one, you can see the different parts that we built just like that. So very simple. Um, you don't have to copy the same color palette as I did, but you know, um, I'll put the link in the description of the sketch so you can guys can make their own character and color it yourself. Um, that'll be pretty cool. So what I'm going to show you now is what I've done with the character <clears throat> with shading and more detail and that type of thing. So I'm just going to get rid of this white box and I'll get rid of the tabs. See, th and this is the guy that I've created. So as you can see, if I zoom in there, you can see all the detail. I've added shading, I've added detail like blood, um, shadows, um, put some gold. Um, and bolts and, and that type of thing into his um, clothing and that type of thing. So really simple guys, um, nothing major. All I really did was, you know, create um, extra shapes and then, uh, you know, I added a transparency or, or I used multiply and, or overlay and I overlaid it and then I will decrease the opacity and that type of thing to get these um, shadow effects on his arms and in his hands and in his boots and that type of thing. So added more detail. So you can see that um, with all this shading, it looks a lot much better. I did change a few of the features uh, with his face. I wasn't liking it, um, and I spent you know an extra few hours refining it and that type of thing. So compared to the, the this guy, but you can see even this guy is pretty cool. Just simple. It doesn't have to be too you know crazy. But as you get better and you practice, you can create random and cool characters. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and as you can see, all the de little details there, pretty cool. And all the shading is pretty much as well on the clothing here, just gradients. Um, if I zoom in and you can see the gradient here on the right hand side, see the gradient, it's just um, two colors, a darker brown and a lighter brown. Um, and then, yeah, this is a black with the uh, um, the transparency set to multiply, as I said before. And then I put the opacity down to 15% because then it'll be too strong, but you just want to be light. So I'm imagining the light is coming from the top and it's coming down. That's why all the sh shadows are under him, like his beard and his arms, that type of thing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Hope this Hopefully this was helpful. 
Um, let me know if you guys like the longer videos or if you prefer short videos. Um, and then I will create some more tutorials um, based on what you guys like. So yeah, thanks. Really appreciate it, guys. Um, subscribe for more videos each week. And I'll catch you in the next video.